Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Show. This episode is kind of a sponsored episode by AI PCBA, and I got this from their website. It's a PCB manufacturer in uh, China, in Shenzhen, and I have to say, I never heard of them before, so when they asked me would I like to try out their service, I said, of course I would, why not? And it just so happened I had some projects in mind. I had three projects in mind. So we'll be able to cover those projects a little bit and have a look at the quality of the PCBs. First impressions are very favourable though. In terms of the web interface, very easy to use. So I pretty much logged in and ordered stuff exactly as you would expect from the usual web interfaces. And then waited just a couple of days. It didn't take long actually to arrive and I got these uh, three sealed packages out of the pack that you just saw, and we're going to have a little look-see. So I'm just searching for my, my knife there, and they're all vacuum-packed. So we have three boards here. We've got the Atari ST um, <laughs> Super Mega, Super Mega there, the uh, Booby Cortex, it's not labelled, and the Atari ST video output. So let's have a look at those. Just going to cut the seal on those. And I have to say, what really impressed me about this delivery is that they arrived through, um, I think it was Parcel Force. I wasn't expecting that. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of used to deliveries from the Far East turning up in you know various mysterious ways, but this was a delivery from Parcel Force. So let's get all the boards out, get it all on the deck, so we're all going to have a look. And I'm going to tell you about these projects as well, in case you miss those design streams that these were on. Clear the, clear the rubbish. Okay. So this is an Atari ST PCB. It's a ROM cartridge, for lack of a better word. Oh, my, my printer's just attacking itself. And what this uh, does, you actually blow ROMs on here, put the EPROMs actually on this side of the board, and you shove that into your Atari ST and it'll boot from this. And I've got uh, planned a diagnostic uh, ROM set right away and that's just using the standard ROMs available for the Atari ST that you can get. And what I'll be doing is also uh, letting you, that those will take up say ROM bank 4, I think that's the standard on the uh, Atari ST for those. And then it'll leave you with two spare ROM banks, so you could just do experiments to those, or you know, put all four ROMs and, and change them how you like. They're basically, um, hard, you know, you've got the upper memory address and the lower memory address of each ROM, so that's why you've got four there. So that's what that board is. As I was alluding to though earlier, the thickness of the board is really critical. So depending on your project, of course, you can order them. The uh, AI PCBA offered boards and all the sort of standard thicknesses, different colours, different silk screens, front and back, hot air levelled, all of the usual, usual options. So we'll have a look though at the Booby Cortex boards. Oh, look at those. It's hard to really give you an idea of the scale of those, but they're pretty, pretty tiny. If you think of that, see a thumb, the power of that that you can put on your thumb these days is amazing. So have a little look-see there though. That is the footprint for an ARM Cortex chip. You've got there a USB. Also, you've got a three pin terminal that you can just, like a screw terminal, and I'll tell you why that's there in a moment. And then when I flip it, oh, there's a couple of LEDs as well. And there's a little power regulator, everything on board basically here to run that chip directly. But if I flip it over, doo -doo 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 -doo, what you'll see there, it says Booby Cortex Mark II. And I'm going to show you with this because it's <laughs> too small. That is the footprint for a CAN transceiver. So if you want to, depending on how you change these solder jumpers here, you can use the two pins um, for CAN RXTX that you get on the um, Cortex and put them directly out to these pin headers or you can solder the correct jumpers and then what comes out to the pin headers is the actual CAN level version that's gone via this transceiver and this tri transceiver is also wired up though to these three pins on that screw terminal uh, and just so you're aware this usb port is also wired up to these pin headers too so you can actually just plug this into something and integrate uh, can and usb 
into your existing device um, or just use them on their own and just plug them in like a little dongle. So those are looking really good. Yeah, but just to let you know, they, they really came out well. What What's sometimes an issue is the silk screen you get on um, sort of rapid prototype PCBs because it can sometimes be a little bit hit and miss. Here you can see I'm missing some chunks because I made a mistake. Can you tell what my mistake is? And I'm going to hold it here so you can see, yes. I forgot to tent the vias, of I call them vias. I notice people calling them vias now, but vias, go via here. And then of course that means that my silk screen, uh, solder resist, silk screen, everything isn't done properly on those areas. So I'm gonna have to do that in a future revision, but as you can see, it's gonna be a while because I, I ordered, I think it looks like at least 20 boards there, probably about 20 boards. So. That'll probably keep me going for a while by the time I've soldered those. And you can see how thick the uh, chunk of boards is when you order in that thickness. And then that brings me on to the final little project, which I think is really cute. It's another Atari ST project. And what this is, it's a Atari ST to VGA adapter, effectively. That's pretty much all it is. And you have this connector here, which goes into the back of your Atari ST video connection, which is that DIN type port. And then on here, you'll have a VGA connection that you solder on here. And just a little switch at the top, really. That's all I've got is a switch. One switch is for high resolution mode on the VGA, uh, high and medium, sorry. And the other switch is for Hang on, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. One is for low and medium resolution, and then when you switch it to the other, it's high resolution, and that's all it is. You basically just got a digital switch that's just routing through all of the correct wires um, to let that happen, because you know the high resolution is mono. Um, so it's not so simple to add a simple mechanical switch, that's just taking care of, taking care of business. So it should be a nice little addition there, uh, just to, to a little Atari ST because you know this is the, the reason for this build you know this whole this batch in a way apart from the uh, cortexes is that is the opportunity for me to build some PCBs for my Atari ST the machine really fell in love with and cut my teeth on coding you know it was an efficient way to do coding but uh, it's the way I got through it and uh, I loved uh, using various structured basics and stars, and I think I did a little bit of C as well. So, you know, real languages, big boy, big boy programming, you know, um, something that people don't really get that much chance to do these days, it seems, it's sort of regressing, big regressing back to point and click type software. Um, so, yeah, an opportunity to make, make something for that machine. Give me a sec, I've got an idea with this. Da, 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 da. Yeah, mm. things didn't quite go to plan on this. So I thought I had the opportunity to make another video while I was in the middle of this video. But uh, that is not a good video to make because it's a video of fail. So first things first, I um, tried to um, assemble my uh, doodad and um, I um, took my chip programmer, so it's the very first time I've ever used one of these. So I've got my EEPROMs, which I ordered uh, from the Far East. I got my EEPROM programmer, and I programmed onto here the Atari STE Diagnostic Program, which is a two, two chips. Um, and I put them right away. I soldered onto this board the wrong um, pin headers. So I put the pin headers here on banks one and two. Um, but of course, remember what I said about uh, ROM3 and ROM4? These things are expected to be in ROM4, so I had to then solder new ones on there and then get them on. So that's why there's all of these pin headers. Although, to be honest, you wouldn't have been none the wiser if I just showed you that, because you just assume I'd have put them all in um, anyway. Um, second problem was um, I mixed up the output enable and chip enable on the pins on the actual PCB. So if you see here, if you mix up an output enable and a chip enable, you're really screwed. And I'll tell you why. Because when you do chip enable, right, these two are considered the same chip. Yeah, you got me? So what it does, it just says, okay, these two chips come online, chip. But it's actually two chips. They come online, okay. And then it's like output enable. Um, and the output enables are connected to the high memory range and the low memory range. So it's like a kind of another chip select, really. So it just kind of goes ding, 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 ding. Yeah, I want to read from you, on it, and it flips like that. So if you've got them set the wrong way around, it's not a simple fix to flip them because when you do the um, 
chip select, the both output enables come on. Y yikes. And um, then your chip enables flicker and that goes tonto. So that clearly was not good. Although I was kind of thinking, would it work? Could it work? Could it, would it, should it? Anyway, what I did was I cut some of the tracks on the PCB. There's another track cut under there. You can see there's a wire coming across there, a bodge wire. And then I've got some more bodge wires here and another cut there and another cut there. To be honest with you, it really screwed my mind doing this fix because it's really tricky. Put it this way, it's just tricky. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I screwed up this edge connector. <laughs> so <laughs> not only of that screwed up, but that was screwed up and I didn't tent the veers as well, which I would prefer to do. So there's a lot of problems here. Um, the edge connector is an interesting one. On certain systems, I think like Commodore 64, and like you have pin sequencing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 20, yeah? 21, uh, 40. Not on the Atari ST, because the Atari ST, I shall show you, because remember the boards go in, by the way, this way on the cartridge port. For whatever reason, people put the chips in. They seem to all go upside down. I don't know why I've done So I did the same. Um, pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 40. So you can see the Atari ST is... Um, totally different from that normal, I say normal, just it's different sequential pin. But when I made this connector footprint, it is uh, wired up that wrong way. However, on the plus side, um, I did measure up the Atari ST cartridge port really nicely and got the pin pitch. So this is absolutely perfect in terms of it fitting in the Atari ST and the pins being exactly and precisely up the middle of each one of those. So I have made a really good cartridge. It's just um, only good from maybe that part onwards, that direction. This part is junk. So uh, yeah, I've got an awful lot of coasters. So PCBA, um, I'm really like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, thanks for sending me these. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them now because I've really, I really screwed the pooch on that one. What you could do though, I could still give them out to people. You know why, there is one benefit. If you're doing projects on your Atari ST and, and that you can do this, it's probably relatively easy to just access the pins you need. So imagine you're putting on here something that's like, a, you know, flashing an LED or something like that. You want a diagnostic LED. You can actually use this for that because you can easily trace out the pins on the address line and just scold them. So it's not all doom and gloom. And while I was at it, I changed these uh, footprints from a through hole capacitor to surface mount because actually all I had was surface mount on the day and they're way easy to fit. So we'll fit those. It's not like it's not total loss. We learned a lot from that. We're going to do something with that one. But I was hoping to show you. Oh, you a really working board. Um, if we reviewing the PCBs though from PCBA actually uh, the board itself is good <laughs> just you know what they say garbage in garbage out but the uh, the garbage was put on really nice PCB it soldered really well I'm just like kicking myself not another load of rather knackered PCBs so uh, that's me right now. I'm going to spend this weekend probably ordering bill of materials to finish these and uh, then uh, continue to discover what I've what mistakes I've made on these other boards. I'm hoping uh, not too many, um, especially on a guy like this. I mean, look at those resistors. I'm, I'm not even sure if I made a sensible choice here. Again, look, it's so sensitive. The camera can't even bloody focus on these. Um, but have a look. They, I really wanted to show you that some of these resistor footprints are so close together right there that it's just gonna be a miracle of science basically to solder those on. So yeah, I'm looking really looking forward to doing those. So please uh, comment down below if you're interested in any of these other things I'm making or just join me on the Discord channel and we can discuss them and you can ask me all sorts of questions on what projects uh, these are gonna be used for. Um, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna use these for. Um, I'm making some, uh, say, CAN bus diagnostic equipment. So I've got another board I've made, which is a USB uh, 2, I think, uh, host controller chip, plus, I think, seven inputs. So I've actually got a little back plane, and these are gonna be just populated and go clip, 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 clip for all sorts of fun networking and processing. It's almost like making your own parallel 
processor out of seven ARM Cortexes. I mean, I don't know, five, six, seven. And if you put a USB bootloader on them, you can update them all over USB. So you've got some, you've got a reasonable amount of processing power, I think, once you add up that many of those guys together. And quite a lot of I.O. because not a lot of the, not all the I.O. is expanded out because, of course, you're limited. You know, I wanted to have a limited footprint that would still fit in a standard uh, chip package. But, you know, you can just keep adding more and more, as many as you want, really. You've got no limits. So there you go. Have a good weekend, guys, or a good week wherever you are. Please like, share, subscribe. And as ever, thanks for watching. I've just been informed by AIPCBA that they are very generously giving a discount to anybody who uses the code below in my description. So if you do need to order some PCBs and you want to get on that, please make sure you use the code down below and make use of that discount. Thanks again to AIPCBA. Bye-bye. <laughs>